After poking around the land even more, it became clear to us that quite a bit of our trees would need to be removed. The aspen, that's a minor thing because it's, it's not uh, interfering with this. Right. I think you'd be better off. Oh, boy. Yeah, it's... So you think this is leafing out well. Yeah. This one has is little... not leafing out too good. Yeah, and it has a little dead, dead stuff on top. Yeah, this here is... That's not doing too good. This tree is actually could be kind of old age. I don't know. But I do notice this one's leafing out well. There. Why does this one go? Is that because it's a Yeah, it, yeah, it's got a lean on it. And uh, if, by, if that uproots by falling, that can damage this one. Yeah. So you might better control it. Many of our ashes, which were out in the open, had signs of emerald ash borer. Yeah, boy. That's real classic right there, the boar. Yeah, so isn't it strange that they have much more boar out here, but not in the woods? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty, pretty amazing. So we should get rid of that, or should we just let it be well, until it falls? They're in there. Yeah. Still, I'd get rid of it. So how do you get rid of it, though, that so it doesn't the boars don't like come out and feast on our other ashes that are in Burn there? Burn it. Burn it. Okay. Yeah. Some of the blue spruce planted by the previous owners succumbed to needle blight. And some other ornamental conifers had heavy winter and deer damage to the point that they were too far gone to be saved. Maybe the UTV or we're gonna just have to you're gonna ask you to get your chainsaw and just cut it off at the base. I mean, this one's so messy. It only has some green on the top and um, it's all, look all this congestion here in the middle and all this dead stuff. So I could maybe clip all these off and see the structure and we could see whether it's beautiful enough. And if it's not, we might have to take it down. Sondra got a head start on removing some of the blue spruce. and the three of us began to work on the smaller trees that we could pull out with our mattock and our UTV. Oh, 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 oh it's coming! It's coming! But for the larger trees, which were easily 50 to 70 feet tall, we would need to bring in more help. So we're bringing in some extra helping hands to take down some trees today. Uh, there's a lot of ash that had been affected by emerald ash borer, so those need to be removed before they infect other ash trees because quite frankly, not all our ash trees are infected with any of those diseases. So we're hoping to safeguard them by taking those infected ones out. And uh, we're gonna be wood chipping a bunch of trees. So we'll have that for wood chips and some of the ash that are too big. We'll go into firewood and if we can't use it, then we'll call our neighbors over to uh, 
to pick up some of the firewood as well. So there's a lot to do today. Uh, the tree cutters and the surgeons are gonna be here all day. By the end of the day, the crew easily took down about four dozen trees. One of the benefits of removing some of the dead and dying trees was the heaping pile of wood chips we got after, which we are using to create paths in the forest and inoculate with edible wine cap mushrooms. Okay, so take a look at this. The very first layer is the cardboard. On top of the cardboard, we have the wood chips. Then we sprinkled this uh, mycelium on top. Now we're gonna put another layer of wood chips on top. And that's the final piece of bread on this mushroom sandwich. We were reluctant to chip the infected ash trees at first, but a USDA Forest Service report showed that if bark is removed from the trees and wood is chipped to a one inch size, there is no survival of emerald ash borer larvae. Chips at four inches had some survival rate, but it was virtually negligible. And we hope this could be the start to healthier trees and a healthier forest. Just so you know, we're reinvesting 10% of our Google AdSense revenue back into the Finger Lakes community, which will be matched by our partners Espoma Organic, which also have ties to this region. So by watching these videos, you're indirectly helping the people and the community here.